guys meet rob the credit guy as you already know you know he's been very successful with this credit repair business you know he has done multiple six figures uh with this business and i think he's all his way to like multiple seven figures i think but uh today you know he's on the interview because we are going to do a quick objection handling or the way he exactly handles all the rebuttals or whatever you call like rebuttals objections so this are the five questions that rob is going to cover the first one is I can't afford it. The second one is I need to speak with my wife. And the third is I'm shopping around for the best price. The fourth is do you take payment on the call itself or if you need to take the payment after the call? And the last one would be like, you know, this is one of the most common question that everyone gets is I've been burned before from other scam credit repair companies. How can I trust you, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. So please help me welcome Rob again on our call. Thank you for taking your time, Rob. Uh, we really appreciate it. And yeah, man, thank you. Yeah, you can go ahead. No worries, man. I appreciate it. I love making these videos with you. You're amazing. Absolutely. Thank you guys right. for watching. Um, and our, our goal in making these videos is really just to educate you and to help you be a better salesperson so you could turn around and make more money um, not just to make more money, but also to help your clients. The more clients you, you help, the more lives you're changing. And in the process, because you're making more money, now your life is being transformed and you're able to live your best life along with, you know, just a, it goes full circle. So that's what we're here to yeah. do is just pay it forward for sure. So, so yeah, let's, let's start with the questions, man. What, what was the first question that you wanted to ask? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So the first question, like, you know, usually all the CROs actually get is, I can't afford it. Like, you know, when they get on the call, that's the question they get uh, saying like, you know, I don't have money or I can't afford it. So how would you tackle that? So the first thing that we have to remember as salespeople is that when someone says I can't afford it, it's not really that they can't afford it. It's they're thinking about, they're looking at it the wrong way. They're looking at it more as a cost, right? Mm. Because most of these leads that we're getting are from Instagram or Facebook. So you can easily go to their Instagram or Facebook yeah. and look at some of the things that they're posting. And I'm going to tell you more than not, I see people posting with Gucci belts, a brand new charger, all these expensive things. So don't tell me that you can't afford to fix your credit when you just went out and had a, a, a $200 dinner, right? Yeah. So that's the first thing that we have to remember is that these clients, these, these leads, they have the money, right? It's just, a, it's, a, it's about a, ma a matter of adjusting the way they're thinking, right? So yeah. when someone says, hey, I can't afford it, immediately, I always bring positive. You always want to be positive with your words. You yep. don't want to, because sometimes it's very easy to get frustrated when someone mm -hmm. says, oh, I can't afford it. And you've been on the phone for 30 minutes already. And now they can't see you, but they can hear you. So if you react and you're like, oh my God, like I just wasted 30 minutes, they can hear that kind of attitude, right? So immediately you want to under, you almost have to expect them to have some kind of rebuttals, right? So you're ready for it. So as soon as they say, hey, I can't afford it. You're like, hey, don't worry, Harshtel. You know, I know you can't, let's say you're charging $300, you know, and then $99 a month, for example, let's use yeah. that as, as our platform. So, Hey, don't worry. If you can't afford to pay the $300 in full today, it's not a big deal. Let me ask you, what can you afford to put down today? And then we can pay off the balance later, mm. right there. You're giving them an option to say, Hey, don't worry about it. Let's, and, and again, the whole time you're keeping it positive. You know, you're saying, hey, don't worry about it. I get it. We have clients that can't afford to pay the $300 either. Mm. What can you afford comfortably? And then we can just pay off the balance. And notice yep. how I didn't give them a number. I didn't say, hey, can you afford to pay $150? I, I, I want to be able to feel, even though I know I'm the one that has the control, I want them to feel like they have some kind of control in this decision making as well. It's also that that alone is going to make them feel comfortable. Right mm. now, uh, the next thing is if they say, hey, you know what? Well, how much do you want me to put down? Listen, we all work very hard, so you're going to want to collect that money as soon as possible. So yeah. my rule is 
I'm always trying to collect half, right? Because half of 300 is only 150 bucks. That's not mm. a lot. You know what I mean? Nowadays, these people are buying Jordans for 200 bucks. So if, yeah. you can't pay, if you can't pay $150 to fix your credit, then maybe also, maybe you're not the client for us, right? Because I don't want you to start the process and then cancel after a month, right? So I always shoot for 150. Well, hey, can you afford to pay 150 today? And then you can pay the other 150 maybe in two to four weeks. Usually that's, that's, that's a no brainer. They're like, yeah, okay, perfect. Let's do it. Um, and that, that addresses that most of the time. But yeah. again, let's take it a step further. Let's say now they say, well, I can't afford anything today. Like I have $5 in my bank account. Like I just paid my rent. It's the first of the month. So then you still don't give up. Okay. Because think about it. You just spent 30, 45 minutes on the phone with them. Why would you want to give up? Mm. So you always want to keep it positive. So let's say they have no money at all. That's when most salespeople will really get frustrated and just hang up on them or maybe even be rude. That's not, that's not how you want to represent yourself or your company, mm. but always keep your composure. That's very important. Yeah. Now, again, they have no money. Let's just say they have no money, right? The next thing you say, don't worry about it. I know you only have $5 in your account, but you did say that you get paid next week. So let me ask you, can you pay the full $300 next week when you get paid? They either answer yes or no. So let's say they say, they say yes. Okay, no worries. Now, this is very important. You do not hang up the phone without getting the payment information. You have to get the payment information, mm. even if you're not charging the card today. Because at the end of the day, if you say, oh, yeah, you take their word for it, buyers are liars. Okay, they're not going to call you back. I'm sorry. So you want to say, okay, you said you could pay next Friday. No big deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get your account set up right now. We're going to start working on the dispute letters. Even though you haven't even made a payment today, we're still going to start doing work. So what I'm going to do is while, while I'm doing that, is it okay if we take the, pay, the payment information today and we charge the card on Friday? Is that okay with you? So notice yeah. how I specifically asked them, I'm going to take, I'm going to get your account set up today. I'm going to work on doing the dispute letters. So you're describing and painting that picture of what you're going to be doing. You're, you're doing more than they have already invested at this point, right? Because yeah. you're already doing work. So yep. you're telling me, I'm going to go ahead and start the dispute letters, get everything set up, but I'm not going to send anything out until, of course, you make that first payment. Hmm. So is it okay with you? If I take the payment information today and we charge the payment on Friday, is that okay? Yeah. The reason why, the reason why I'm ending that sentence with, is it okay? Hmm. Is because you're asking them permission, number one. Number two, that is a yes or a no. There is no maybe. There, oh, there's a maybe. Let me think of no. It's either yes or no. And if they say, oh, no, um, let's, let's just say they say no. Hmm. And you're like, well... Marshall, you just said that you're ready to go. You know, you understand the process. You will have the 300 on Friday. Hmm. You know, what, what's, why are you hesitant on giving us your payment information if we're already going to start the process now, even though you haven't paid us? Doesn't that sound like a good deal for you? Hmm. So you're constantly, constantly going at it. My rule is, and I said this on the previous videos, is you have to rebuttal at least three times you have to i i can't stress that enough why it's not about being pushy it's about helping these people sometimes these yeah. people need to be pushed so they can realize how much you know uh they actually need your help hmm. and another thing as a salesperson the worst feeling and i know everyone watching this video has felt this at some point in time where they're on the phone they spend 30, 45 minutes or more on the phone trying to close this deal. And then they hang up the phone, not getting the deal. And then they're like, damn, I should have said this. I should have said that. Mm -hmm. I should have went a little harder on that call. And then you beat yourself up and you take that type of vibe and you take that type of energy to your next call. Next call, and then yeah. Your whole, your whole day is messed up, man. Messed up. So even if you don't, let's say, you, let's say you don't even make the sale. If you rebuttal that person three, four, five, ten times, 
at the end of that call and you don't make the sale, you're going to actually feel somewhat good mm. because you're like, man, I really went hard on that call. Yeah. And I sound, I sound very professional because you always want to keep it professional. I sound very professional. I pushed it to the max. And I know if they call another credit repair company, if I couldn't close it, they can't close it because I just rebutted it like 20 times. Yeah. Makes sense, bro. So that that's really important. Um, yeah, so that that's how I would handle that. What's 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 another a rebuttal yeah, that this is like another common one that we have seen, like you know, many CRO says. Uh it's I need to speak with my wife. I love this one. You know why I love this one? Most people <laughs> hate this one because this for most people, this is their nemesis, right? Mm -hmm. This is the big one that they just can't overcome. Yeah. It's a lot easier than you think. You know why it's a lot easier than you think? Because 90% of these people who say I need to speak to my spouse, mm -hmm. they're full of it. They're lying. They don't need to speak to their spouse. Yeah. They already, they, you know why I'm saying that? Is because they already talked to them, their spouse about this. Yeah. You, you think their spouse doesn't know that they're shopping for credit repair? Come on now. Don't be, don't be naive. Remember buyers are liars, right? Yeah. So there's a couple of ways that you can attack this with this. You cannot, you cannot go light. You have to be very direct. You have to be very straightforward. If you beat around the bush, you got to understand they're going to do the same thing and y'all just going to keep dancing. <laughs> so what you want to do is if somebody says, Hey, I need to speak to my spouse. Mm -hmm. you, can sim you can simply say, Hey, Partial. I know you need to speak to your spouse. I get it. I'm also married, but you, you know, your spouse better than anyone. At least I hope so. You know? So if she was on this call right now and she went through the credit report, just like me and you went through the credit report and she saw all this damage and everything that needs to be repaired. Do you think that she would tell you, Hey, hun, I think we should get this done. Or you think she would say no. What do you hmm. what do you think she would say after after going through this call with us? Right. And so, yeah, again, that is a very direct yes or no question. You want to be blunt with it and simply ask them a direct question. Um, another way that you can you know, address this is. And I usually use this one after I've rebuttaled it at least two to three times. This, yeah. this is a pretty. This is a this is one that's going to stop you in the in your, in your in their tracks right now. So after I've rebuttaled this a couple of times, I need to speak to my spouse. I'm like, hey, Harsha, if what what happens if your if your spouse what happens if your wife says no? What then? What do we do? What do we do at that point? Most people, when you ask them, hey, what if your wife or what if your husband says no? No, yeah most people don't even know how to, I mean it's so funny when I do this because they almost don't know how to respond their response normally is well I never thought about that what if, yeah what if what if my <laughs> wife says no about repairing my credit and normally at that point I'm pulling their card that that's that's what I'm doing I'm I'm, I'm calling them bluff right and so at that point they're most of the time they're like you know what let's just do it man because I'm going to talk to my anyway. wife. I'm going to, I'm going to end up doing it anyway. And that's, yeah. that's normally what gets them to do it because again, or another thing that you can do is remember you're in conversation. You've already been talking to this person. So you probably got to know a little bit of their story by now, or at least I hope yeah. you have. And so most of these people have already been declined for a house. Most of yeah. these people have been declined for a car, an apartment. They've been declined for something. That's that's a part of their story, guys. Yeah. So don't be scared to use that. Because if somebody says, I need to speak to my spouse, you can easily say, well, hey, Harshu, I know in the beginning of our conversation, you told me that you were declined for a house. And that house is not just for you, man. That's for you, your wife, your kids, your whole family. You know, getting declined for anything, not just the house, but getting declined for anything is, you know, it hurts, man. It's embarrassing, especially as, as a spouse, as a husband, you know, we're, we're leaders of the household. So those kind of conversations, when you tell your wife, hey, honey, you know, we just got declined for this house. You know, we're not mm -hmm. going to be able to get that backyard for the kids. 
That's a very hard decision to have with your wife. Would you agree? And notice how I asked them, would you agree? And they yeah. were, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Well, now I'm giving you the opportunity to come to your wife and, and come as a hero and say, hey, hon, I made a decision for the family to fix our credit. Does, don't you think that'll be a little bit easier of a conversation for you to yeah. have with her? Right. So there, there's so many, again, there's so many ways that you can spin it. And this is why it's so important. Look, guys, I have a notepad here. You know what yeah. this notepad is for? This notepad is for taking notes. It is yeah. for taking very important details on every single conversation. You know why? Because that is ammo for me yeah. to close the deal. This is yeah. why in the beginning of the initial call, you need to ask questions. This is called the fact finding. You have to find all the facts. You have to pull the heartstrings. Hey, what is your motivation to repair your credit? Is it to buy a house? Is it to get a car? What happened? And they start telling you their story. And yeah. so when they say, I need to talk to my wife or whatever that objection is, you can use this. And so yeah. you have to, you know, practice makes perfect, but those are the ways that I would rebuttal it. And I'm telling you, I close at about a 90 to 95% success rate. And that's, that's no, that's no exaggeration at all. Why? Because I actually listen to when people talk. And as long as you're a good listener, you're going to close deals. Guys, you need to pay Rob for doing this. <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm hyped, man. Let's go. What's the next one? Let's go. Come on. Yeah. So the third one is I'm shopping around for the best price. Okay. So you're going to get these people. These people are everywhere. Okay. <laughs> there's, not, there's, there's, there's nothing you could do about that, right? Yeah. Um, and credit repair is a very competitive, you know, industry that we're in. Yeah. So, and, and I get it. So again, let's go back with the question. Somebody says, Hey, I love what you got to say. You sound like you're the guy I'm going to go with. They give, they usually give you all yeah. these amazing compliments. And then, and then they hit you with, well, I need to think about it because I'm <laughs> shopping for price. Yeah. Right. So my, my first go-to is, Hey, harsh show. I get it that you're shopping around for price, man. There's nothing wrong with that. I know when I buy some shoes or I buy a car, I'm always trying to get the best deal. If I don't feel like I'm getting the best deal, then I don't feel like I'm winning. So I get that. Mm -hmm. But how many, how many, how many credit repair people or company have you actually talked to already? Like how many quotes have you gotten? Mm -hmm. Normally, and the reason why I ask them that is because normally I'm not the first one. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very rare that I'm the first one, right? So I'll ask them, hey, how many people have you talked to? And most of the time they'll respond with three, four, five, even if it's two, right? And so I asked them, so if, let's say they say, hey, um, I talked to two other people. So I'm like, okay, Harshal, so I'm the third person. Is that what you're saying? I'm the third credit repair you know, company that you yeah. talk to? Like, uh, they're like, yeah. And I'm like, all right, so let me ask you, I mean, what's the reason? I mean, they couldn't be that bad. I mean, what's the reason why you didn't sign up with the first two people? Right. Mm. So this kind of question really makes them go, hmm, and makes them think like, OK, you, again, you're calling them bluff. Right. You, you yeah. Know, I mean, it is, it is what it is. Yeah. So sometimes they'll respond and they all have different responses, but sometimes they'll respond and say, oh, well, that guy, the price was too high. Or they'll say, well, you know, that guy was charging me. You know, that guy was charging me a little less than you because sometimes they'll try to be, you know, try to haggle the yeah. price. With you. So I, I love that because then that gives that gives me more ammo because I'm like, hey, I told you it was three hundred dollars to get started. You said that the other guy charged you two hundred dollars to get started. Let me ask you, why, why didn't you sign up? Yeah. Because if it's about price, then, you know, why didn't you sign up with him? Right. And so I'm constantly, constantly digging and asking them questions about, you know, it's all about really getting the truth out mm. because what they're, what they're telling you is an excuse. That's all it is. It's, it's just yeah. an excuse. The, the thing is never about the thing. And you have to be, again, a good listener and you have to also ask the right questions. The yep. reason why you're not closing deals right now is because you're not asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. And some people are scared to ask the right questions because they feel like they're being too forward or they mm -hmm. feel like they might lose the deal because yeah. 
they're going to ask, you know, a, a question that's too forward. Listen, you know, I, when somebody says, you know, I'm shopping around, it, that's all, that's also goes hand in hand with I'm thinking about it. it it's kind of like the same thing, right? Mm. So another way you can address that is, hey, you know, I know that you're shopping around for price, but let me ask you, you said that you got declined and you've been dealing with this bad credit for what, the last two years, roughly? Mm. Why, why do you want to wait another day? Why would you want to be in this situation another day uh, with bad credit when we can get you started now and you have your first credit update in 30 days? Like, why, why, are, you, why are you continuing to put it off? What more do you need to think about? Mm. Right. So, you know, th these are questions that will really make someone think. And if you can make them think, you're probably going to make them you're probably going to make that sale. And yep. you also got to remember that asking these type of questions, I can almost guarantee you that no other credit repair person are asking these questions. You're being personal, you're being upfront, and you're and you're really treating them like a human being. You're not at this point, you're not even selling them. You're just trying to figure out what the problem is and you are the solution. Yeah. Yep. So so that's going to really, you know, separate you is asking, you know, the big takeaway here is being a good listener mm. and asking the right questions. Yeah. Right? So yeah. you can take, you can take all, you could rewatch this video and take everything that I'm saying and mm. say the same exact thing, but then also put your own spin on it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, continue to ask questions. If you don't ask questions and you yeah. don't go for, the, if you don't go for the sale and that's another thing, all these rebuttals are great, but if you don't say, Hey, so are you ready to get started? Or, you know, ha have, have you heard enough to make a decision today? Those are the questions. Those are closing questions. If you're not yeah. asking those, that's the reason why you're not closing. Because you can have good rebuttals, but if you don't go yeah. for the close, it's, it's a waste of time. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Uh, bro, so uh, usually based on what we have seen is like, you know, people usually were messed things up is like whenever they're getting all these inquiries or leads reaching out to them on Instagram or Facebook, some people actually, you know, send them the calendar link or like an appointment scheduling link. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they do it, but usually, you know, we usually recommend as per you, like, or like, you know, anyone who is successful out there is ask them one or two questions and just try to take them on call ASAP. You know, so that's the another thing, like, you know, people usually mess up. So do you have any take on that? I think you have pretty much covered that part in the earlier video, but still. Yeah. Well, yep. I mean, you got to understand that nowadays, everybody will text you. They'll mm. message you on Instagram, but let's be real. You're not closing no deals through text message. You're not, yeah. you're not closing no deals through Calendly. You're not... <laughs> Excuse me, you're not closing though. You, you have to be personal, right? Yep. They have to know that you are a real person, that you yeah. are a real company. So you have to ask them for their number. Matter yep. of fact, I had a I had a lead yesterday who said, um, oh, I, I feel more comfortable texting. That's that yeah. was his response. So right then and there, I'm like, really, bro? Like, you know, I know first of all, you're not signing up. Through any, I don't care who it is. I don't care what credit repair company. You're not signing up through text message. It's just not yeah. going to happen. Like, no matter how big of a company you are or how small of a company you are, you're not signing up anyone through uh, for credit text. repair doing through yeah. text message. Yeah. So my response was, hey, you know, um, I said, I know you feel comfortable. And I text this to him, which is crazy. But again, I'm, I'm a never give up type of guy. So uh, I responded with, uh, I, I, I understand that you feel comfortable texting, mm -hmm. but this is very impersonal. And as a professional, I want to be able to deliver the best service to all of my clients. Here is my phone number. And normally I don't do this, but I said, here is my phone number. Here is my name. And give me a call when you have five minutes to talk. That was my response. Normally, I don't give out my phone number. Yeah. Even though it's all over the internet and all that stuff, but I don't yeah. give that out. I um I ask for their number. Hmm. Why do I ask for their number and I don't give my number first? Is because hmm. if I give them my number first, they can say, okay, I'll call you on Friday. 
I don't, yeah. want, I don't want you to call me on Friday. I want you to call me right now. Right now, so, yeah. And, and again, this is why when you text them through Instagram or Facebook, this is part of the pre-qualifying process. You yeah. know, if they're not willing to give you their phone number, they're not willing to give you no kind of Visa or MasterCard number either. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so guys, you know, yeah. yeah, just try to get their phone number and try to get them on call ASAP instead of sending them the scheduling link because at some particular point in time, you know, they're going to lose the interest. Like if they schedule a call with you like day after tomorrow or tomorrow, you know, it doesn't make sense. Just try to take them on call. Bro, yeah. fourth Marshall, question. Let me, let, me, let, me yeah, give yeah. You, let me give you an example because that's yeah. so important for people to understand. Yeah, yeah. Think yeah. about it like this. Yeah. If you walk in the mall and you see yeah. a pair of shoes that you like, but then you walk out of the shoe store, the likelihood of you going back that same day or anytime yeah. soon and buying those same shoes are not very likely, uh, yeah. right? It's yeah. the same thing with, 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 the, with the leads. Elite, if yeah. they're messaging you, and that's a real person messaging you, yeah. and, you don't, and you respond three hours later, or you send them your calendar, it's almost like you're pushing them away. Mm. Don't, don't do that. Ask them for their phone number so they know that you know, you're a real person. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just, I wanted to give you that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that example because people are literally walking away from you. And yeah. that if, if you keep doing that, you're, you're yeah. never going to reach your sales, your sales goal. And that's very important. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. Yeah. Thank you for uh, chiming in, bro. Uh, the fourth question was, is, do you take payments on the call itself or after the call? So as I'm closing the deal, uh, yeah. do I take payment over the phone? Like right then and yeah. there? Yeah. Absolutely. A absolutely. Yeah. I don't, I don't send them to no website. I don't do none yeah. of that because at this point, think about it. You're 35, 45 minutes into this call and you're like, Hey, don't worry. Go to my website and make the payment. Come on, man. You you're letting that deal go once more. Imagine yeah. if you rebuttaled it three, four, five times and you finally got them to say yes. But then when they hang up that phone, hmm. their kid walks in the room or they're, you know, now they're back to work or now they got to go to the store, whatever. There's so many distractions. Yeah. And then now you're giving them that now they have what is called buyer's remorse. Now they're yep. like, oh, you know what? Maybe I do need to think about it, you know? Hmm. So yeah, absolutely. As soon as you rebuttal, go for the close. Hey, Harshal, how did you want to make your initial first payment? Did you want to use a Visa or a MasterCard? Yeah, MasterCard. That's it. And yeah, you wait. Yeah. And then and after that, like you don't say anything. You say, do you want to make, make uh, your first payment with a Visa or MasterCard? And then they let them respond. That's it. And so if they say no, like, hey, well, I got to give you my card over the phone. Absolutely. Everything that we do is electronically. So I'll take the payment information and then your monthly payments will come out on the 15th of each month mm -hmm. and it just comes out. So you don't even have to call in and make a payment. Very mm -hmm. simple. Just like, just like your gym membership. Yeah. Ooh. All right. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to paint that picture for them. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, just like a gym membership. Mm. They're like, Makes oh, sense, okay, bro. cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bro. Very last question. Like this would be like, you know, the one of the common question. I think like, you know, there are so many comments and like posts out there that actually, you know, tries to understand. But the fifth question is I've been burned before from other scam creator per companies out there. What's your take? Like if you get so, this question. This is there, there's so many ways to answer this, but I'm going to try to keep it simple as possible. Um, yeah. But I, I think the most important thing as a company, I don't care if you're a one man army or you have a, you know, 20 salespeople on your team. Mm. It is very, very important to build a Google page, build up your reviews, yeah. build, up, build up a Facebook page for your business, build up yep. reviews, um, you know, post testimonials on your Instagram, yeah. on Facebook, everywhere that you can post testimonials, the real clients getting real results. That's mm. what people want to see. Right. Um, that is the easiest rebuttal because yep. even like, like our company, right. You can go and look up quick tax and credit solutions and you can see all of our reviews yeah. And on Google right now, as of today, we have, I think, 
our, our we're at like 4.8 stars, I believe. So mm. almost five stars. I am so proud of that. We work so hard for that. And that is a badge of honor. So the yeah. first thing that I do is when we're on the phone, hey, Harshal, I get it, man. You've been burnt before. And that that really burns me. Why? Because I love what I do, you know? And so it, it's one of those, do me a favor, Harshal. You're on your yeah. phone, right? Go to Google and type in the name of our company, Quick Tax and Credit Solutions. And I literally mm. have them do this while I'm on the phone. Mm. And when they when they pull it up, on, I can't make this up. This is what I toss. I can't make this up. Go to Google. I want you to actually just skim through our reviews and you can see that we have almost five stars and we've been in business for since 2010. That is, this is, this has nothing to do with sales guys. This yeah. is reality. Even if you started your company last month and you don't mm. have the track record like we do, that's something you could build up over time. Mm. And every client that you get, ask them for reviews, ask them for reviews. Why? Because this is the biggest and the best rebuttal that you can use for something like mm. this, right? So yeah. that, that's, what I, that's what I encourage you to do. Build up your, your social media with testimonials. Make sure you have a Google page. Um, and that just creates more legitimacy. So that is the best way to do it. Um, another way that you can address this is, hey, listen, uh, you know, every, every credit repair company is different. So you could tell them, hey, I have 100%, you know, money back guarantee if, if you offer that. Um, you can also say, hey, I get that you've been burnt before, but let me ask you a question, Harsha. What, what, is, it that, uh, what is it that you do for a living? Hmm. Uh, and so Harsha would answer back and say, "Yeah, yeah, what, what you, what I, cook I, I cook sandwiches. I cook sandwiches. <laughs> you cook. You okay? So let let's use that, right? So yeah, you, let, let's let's say you cook sandwiches. You own a restaurant. Well, hey, yeah, Harsha, I get it, man. You own a restaurant. How many sandwich shops do you think are around you? Probably a, probably quite a bit, right? Yeah, so not many. all not all sandwich shops are going to be the best." That has yeah. nothing to do with you. And so this is how I feel about our company. It motivates me with someone like you, who is a good person, works hard for their money, and yeah. makes me even more motivated to help you. Just like when someone walks into your sandwich shop and yep. says, man, I had a bad sandwich the other day. You're gonna, you're probably gonna make the best freaking sandwich for that client, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's and that's exactly how we feel when, when clients come to us with that kind of issue. So, and th these are real analogies and real examples that you can give them. And you notice how personal I am. I'm like, yeah. hey, Harsha, what is it that you do for a living? They can say they're a trucker. Yeah. They can say that they're a painter. They whatever. Yeah. Use that and give them a real analogy, because it's not fair for us to wear a black eye for someone, for a company that, you know, did that person wrong. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Guys, you need to go ahead and subscribe right now. And uh, also, I think Rob have already mentioned this, but Rob also has a mentorship program. Just in case, if you guys are interested in reaching out to him, bro, where can they call you? Tell them your absolutely. number. So I'm going to give you my direct number. It's 954 yeah. 4710129 we have a coaching program where all we do is teach you how to become sales assassins i'm telling yeah. you you go through our program all <laughs> the rebuttals all the issues that you're having right now gone gone you're going to make more you're going to make more if you're making 20 sales a month right now we're going to get you to do double and triple that's yeah. that's always our goal i have people that came to us with no sales experience <laughs> And literally nothing at all, never done yeah. sales. And now they're hitting 50 deals, 100 deals. Uh, one person, I'm yeah. talking about one, not a whole team of people, one person hitting 50 deals, 100 deals a month and with no sales experience. So everything that I know, we teach you. Yeah. Yeah, guys. So I'll also leave your Instagram link below, bro. So in that way, they can also reach out to your Instagram as well. And yeah, guys, so if you are interested in getting more credit repair clients and you need help with any sort of credit repair marketing, where basically you need all the inquiry reaching out to you directly, uh, you can also schedule a call with me and I'll definitely be able to help you out, you know, so yeah.
Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, hit me up. Rob, the credit guy. Yeah. Um, again, phone number 954-471-0129. Yeah. Guys, please reach out to him if you need ever need any kind of help. You know, like based on my experience and what I know, like I, I personally know Rob for last, I think, four or five years so far. And like all of his mentors make more than 10 to 15 grand a month, minimum, you know. So if you guys ever want to do that and if you want to have a leap of faith, just invest in my guy for sure, you know. And you'll definitely, because I know I personally know like and everything about him, you know. And he's beast at sales and he's been doing this for like the last 20 to 25 years, I guess, you know. So, well, yeah, guys. Also, another thing is yeah. if... Uh... If you guys have any questions, drop a comment below yep. and let me know what kind of rebuttals, um, yeah. what, what are you having trouble with? You know, when you're closing a deal, what is your biggest thing that you cannot overcome that you're constantly facing? Yep. Drop it in the comments below and let us know because in yeah. our next video, we'll, we'll go ahead and address that and help you out. Yeah, yeah, and we'll also feature you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, guys. Arshto, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, bro. Thank you for your time, man. I really appreciate it, bro. Always. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Yep.